Hello, my name is Richard Starkweather, and this is a case study on Hyperbolica. Uh, we're going to be going over a few topics uh, while going through the starting zone of the game. This game just came out on March 15th, uh, it is now early April, and I hope that you all enjoy my analysis of this game. So let's get started. The entire game starts with you being in a virtual classroom uh, in Euclidean space. Uh, this does a little bit of world building. You basically just kind of have to go through it. It's not so much as a tutorial as just saying, hey, this is getting you kind of used to the standard motion controls, uh, or at least for looking around. Uh, it does, again, set up for the actual gameplay, which comes after this scene. This is where you meet Cornelius. He is effectively going to be your quest giver for the main story quest. Uh, the whole plot effectively being that you're trying to find these five geometric solids. Uh, I guess there's some humor in that because you're now in Euclidean space and uh, the geometric solids would no longer actually work in hyperbolic space. Uh, there's more of a joke toward it to the end of the game, but this is basically setting up the entire storyline and is you getting used to, uh, again, more interaction with NPCs. Uh, he does effect or eventually send you off on a quest to go get a map, uh, which will be your first experience in actually moving in non-Euclidean space. Now, when you first start moving around, you quickly realize that the physics of this game are not what you expect. Uh, things will get closer to you in different ways than, again, you would normally expect in Euclidean space. Uh, you will find that uh, it takes five right turns to effectively uh, go around a circle. So four right turns makes a single left. Uh, here, though, uh, is, again, interacting, and you finally get your map. Uh, once you actually look at your map, you, again, do realize that things are very different here in Hyperbolica.
Now, as you proceed through this main starting zone, this is effectively the hub. Uh, you will find other NPCs that you can interact with. Uh, they do kind of give you a little bit of information as to what's going on in the background. Uh, this area specifically uh, is to lead into an art zone that you can't get into just now. Uh, but there are you know, some digital representations of famous art pieces I think are quite clever. Uh, more you know, conversation from NPCs. But you will go and find that the entrance here, uh, while you would like to go into it, uh, you actually can't go into it just yet. As I mentioned before, he basically says you can't go in. Uh, if you attempt to actually go and use that portal, uh, it actually doesn't work. Uh, again, if you look around through the space, you quickly realize that the directions you would expect to be able to use for normal physics don't quite work uh, because everything just kind of seems bent out of shape but that is what you have to get used to while uh, making your way around Hyperbolica. Now most of the starting zone for this game is basically you maneuvering around and interacting with different NPCs. There's not a whole ton that can actually be done out here outside of just looking around, getting used to the feel of working in hyperbolic space uh, and adjusting to uh, the look and feel of trying to deal with this type of uh, interactive environment. Now, there are some things that are hidden around, uh, but mostly this is just to get you used to the controls. Uh, there aren't really any goals set, it's just kind of exploration. Uh, but really, with an exploration type game, which this is, this is pretty sufficient to just kind of get you uh, into the feel of the game itself. Uh, in addition to all of this, it does give you a better grasp of the scope of the game uh, because as an exploration game, you're wanting to maneuver around, look around, uh, see what you can find, and go from there. One other thing that I did want to kind of note, uh, the blue and pink in here that's kind of what uh, I've heard called a weenie. Uh, basically something to kind of draw your eye to the zone and you know, let you know that you're in that area. Uh, there aren't a lot of really guiding colors. There is a single uh, guidepost in the center of the world, as it were, that lets you know that if you go in this general direction, there's something for you to find. Um, but really... Uh, there's not much in the way of like guidelines or things that tell you you should go in this direction. Um, this part here is actually a cute little bit of foreshadowing. Uh, there's actually a trampoline you need to jump on later in the game. Uh, and when you start jumping on it, yeah, the the spheric uh, world, as it were, just gets further away the higher you jump, and it looks really freaky. One fun note uh, with this guy, especially that when you get to the farm zone, the vertigo gets really bad if you're not paying attention. Now eventually by looking around down in the city, uh, you will find this little cafe that you can actually enter. Uh, they do greet you in. And this will actually be the first zone outside of the starting zone. So that's the starting zone. Uh, there's plenty of NPCs and dialogue and exposition. 
uh, to kind of get you into the game. Uh, the first zone will actually start teaching you about interacting on a larger basis uh, and that going in straight lines isn't always the fastest way. Uh, in either case, this is my conclusion of this study. I hope it's been insightful and thank you for watching.